When you hit 20,000 subscribers, maybe you should do a video on how you learn and also produce your videos. Okay. So first off, I just want to name a few YouTubers, give them a shout out because they're awesome. And YouTube is really what helped me learn at the start of this. So Bea Software, he's a good buddy of mine. Go check him out. He's awesome. He's hit like 12,000 subscribers or something. So you should definitely go check him out. Brian Advance, he's another awesome guy. Code with Chris is awesome. Geeky Lemon Development is another one. They're actually like one of the first ones that I started watching when I was first programming. So big shout out to them, they're awesome. Matt Haney Apps is another one. He does some awesome videos on how to do iOS development. And lately he's been switching up his genre of doing things, but it's still very cool. So you should definitely go check it out. Hopefully I didn't miss any of the people that are really like watching, but those people are awesome. So go check them out. Now as for figuring out how to do something in Swift, I use a lot of Apple documentation when it comes to that. And then probably my best friend is stackoverflow.com. I visit that website a ton and it answers pretty much all the questions I need. And if it doesn't, I can usually go from like Objective-C and try to figure that out as well. A few other websites I use are Ray Wenderlich, Ray, Ray, Ray Wenderlich. A few other websites I use are raywenderlich.com and also ioscreator.com as well. And I'll have everything linked in the description down below if you want to go check it out as well. I also often get asked if there's like a book I can recommend. This is really the only book I've ever bought about programming and I haven't used it that much so uh, there's nothing really I can recommend. I hear Ray Wenderlich's books are awesome but I haven't checked them out myself so I really can't recommend anything. So yeah, those are a few recommendations, but actually the process of me programming is just me logging into Xcode. I try my best to figure out how to do something all by myself, and if I figure it out, great. But if I even find it out myself, I'd usually check online and see if there's a better way of doing it. So I pretty much Google everything I learn, and that's how I learn. I have specific things that I need to look for, like how to move a label or something like that. And basically I, there's documentation all over the place on the internet because the internet is an amazing place and you can pretty much figure out everything. And then the ideas of all these videos generally come from the people asking questions. And then with those questions, I like to develop an app with that. So for instance, someone asked how to tilt a device and make something move by the tilt of a device. Now I wanted to do kind of something fun with this. So I said, how to make a maze game. I try to make it a little bit in more interesting than just how do you take the tilt and do something with that. So that's generally like the philosophy of this channel is I want to produce something that I love. So I'll take those comments that you guys make and I'll make show you how to make Flappy Bird or a maze game or Crossy Road or something like that in my own general way. And sometimes like the, if an app goes to number one, I'm always just like, oh, this would be cool to clone. And so I do that. So that's what I did with Pick the Lock. So to start off the tour, this is what I generally use. I use my softbox lights right here to light up the scene. I also have windows right over here, but it's dark right now. So I use those softbox lights pretty much all the time. And then also right over here, I have another softbox light and this one actually doesn't have the a filter over it, this makes it so it's a brighter scene and a bit more harsh on one side. And then for my tripod, I just have a cheap old tripod that I've actually had ever since this camera, because it came with it. And then for recording things in general, I use the Blue Spark microphone right here, and it connects via an auxiliary cable over to the Focusrite Scarlett right here, which then converts the audio from this thing into, uh, into the computer so I can then record. And this is connected to a boom mic so I can move this wherever I want. This was a recent purchase and it's very awesome. I highly recommend it. Right now I'm recording via the Rode VideoMic Pro and this is what I generally use when I'm just talking on camera, unless I'm sitting in front of the desk here. Then this was another recent purchase. This is the lens that I typically use when I'm sitting in front of the desk here. It is the Sigma 18-35 f1.8 lens. Very good lens. Right now the video that you're seeing recording right now is the, on the Rebel SL1 with the Tokina 11-16 16 lens, a very wide angle lens, so that's why I'm using it right now, so I can capture these wide angle shots of the desk and my lights and whatnot. And then for editing my videos, I use Adobe Premiere CC. I started off this channel with iMovie, so it really doesn't matter what you use, but I like Adobe Premiere CC as it gives me a lot more options. 
To record the videos, I use QuickTime Player. It's just the simplest thing to use. It's on here. So you can just go over to the QuickTime Player and just say new screen recording or audio recording, and it works. And then when I'm done recording that, I just move that right into Adobe Premiere CC and cut out all the sections where I'm pausing or mess up or whatnot. And then I export that and I upload it to YouTube. And also all the effects, all the intros that I create, those are all done in Adobe After Effects. So there you have it, that's how I record and all the equipment that I use and everything that I use for these videos. Hope you enjoyed, thank you all so much for 20,000 and I will see you in the next one.